right, just let it connect there. Great. All right, everyone, uh, thank you for joining us for this uh, bonus webinar to Dr. Iyer's uh, regular series here. Uh, my name is uh, Deepak Saini, and I'm going to throw it to Dr. Iyer to do a little intro on me before I jump into our topic today, which is uh, uh, movement in quarant and quarantine. Thank you so much for making yourself available to us, Deepak. I so appreciate it. You know, at this point in time, we're all thinking about our weight and our health and all of those sorts of things. And what I find that I don't pay enough attention to is movement, right? Because under stress and whatever's going on in the world right now, it's easier to sit down and watch the news or stay glued to what's happening around us. So I thought having you uh, present to us on functional movement would be an amazing addition to our program. Now, why you? Because I'm absolutely amazed at what you offer and the total breadth of your knowledge, which is very substantial. Now, for everyone who hasn't met Deepak before, and I'm just trying to turn off my notifications here, sorry about that. Um, you know, what you have achieved by, uh, you know, through your own health and life and how you've turned it around into a career focused on helping everyone in, you know, who consults with you be better. And it's not just you know, you're not just a fitness trainer. You're not just a health coach. You're not just, you, you're so many things put together. And I, and I can't even find a, a term that gives you enough credence to what you've done with your service offering. But what I love most is teaching us that movement is as critical to health as what we put in our mouths. Because I, I say to my patients all the time, you know, when I'm 80, I wanna wipe my own bum and I wanna put my own groceries away. I wanna bathe myself, wash my hair and drive to where I'm going. And it's easy enough to say I'm lean, but the question is how much can I do up here or, you know, like the act of washing my hair. Uh, I watch my mom in her 60s and she struggles to keep her arms above her head. So, you know, I mean, I, I still don't think I've done a good enough um, introduction for you, but what I would like everyone to know is that Deepak was an accountant and through his own health challenges, uh, dedicated his life to helping others be healthier and achieve a higher level and quality of health than what is available through traditional medical models. That being said, you're such an asset to our team because you kind of bring it all together for the patients where you can still talk to them about sleep. You can still talk to them about peptides and you can still talk to them about PRP and you know and, and you have knowledge in so many areas and you're not just going okay well let's work out and build this muscle group and balance it with that and and you know so so it's 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 so refreshing but it's amazing that you had a career and you've now diverged into an entirely new career which I'm sure is very much more rewarding for you or you wouldn't do it but um, I, I am absolutely delighted to have you on our team and I'm so impressed and 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 happy to have you talk to us today about what is functional movement and as you said you know if you don't want to go to the gym and I hate the gym to be honest with you I absolutely despise going to a gym and, and, and it's very hard to find me in one so you know even through your coaching and our chats and things you know it's so nice to be able to just do things in the smallest amount of space and in very short bursts of time so take it away Deepak. Great, thank you. I appreciate those uh, those uh, kind words, and and I for sure have a, in my per, in my one-on-one uh, -on -one coaching have a very breadth of knowledge and something. I'll just I'll just throw it in there really quickly. That, yes, uh, that's please. Growing, tell, that's growing. Tell, tell everyone more about what you do and what you offer because I I was just. Obviously. Sure. So I'm, I'm a health performance and longevity coach. I have a, I have a goal to be a centenarian plus, uh, and, but it's all about uh, not lifespan, it's about health span. So about being healthy right, right till the end, uh, end the end, end days. Uh, so that's my personal goal. And some of my uh, clients, uh, you know, uh, want to be high performers in anything that they do. And that can mean many different things. Uh, and they want to, uh, some of them want to come on that uh, journey with me for a uh, longevity as well. But one thing, the one thing I wanted to bring up that's actually becoming really big now, uh, not only our society, but more and more people are coming uh, to this for me as well, is uh, actually about uh, how to mitigate EMF uh, exposure and EMF uh, damage, electromagnetic field. So we're not talking about today, that's not our topic today, but that is something that's really, I'm getting more busy with that uh, 
uh, going and testing uh, clients' homes and, and that sort of thing. So anyway, so if somebody wants a question on that, they can reach out to me later or throw it in the, in the Q&A. Speaking of which, uh, we're, we will have some Q&A at the end. So if you have any questions, throw them in now in the Q&A box, but we will, I will address them uh, at the end. So let's jump right in. Uh, functional movement, functional fitness. So first of all, first thing I want to say is that, uh, you know, uh, humans, Homo sapiens were meant to move. Our bodies were designed to move, to move constantly, to do low level activity all the time. And when uh, the time comes for it, to be able to move quickly to sprint. So when we have to chase our game or our food or run away from becoming food, that is how we have evolved. And, and you know, over 100,000 years plus, that hasn't really changed. What has changed is in the last let's call it 60 years or so, we are sitting more and more, uh, you know, sitting in front of the TV, sitting in cars, sitting at our off, uh, you know, in our, uh, at, at offices, at our desks, what have you, uh, sitting in front of the TV uh, at night, uh, et cetera. So we become more sedentary over time, but that is not how our bodies are, are meant to move. So we want to move. So I'm going to kind of go into two parts here. The first part talking about sort of cardio, and then I'll talk about strength training after. So as far as cardio, so uh, let me take half a step back here. I, I, I've, I've done all that stuff. I used to power lift. I used to train uh, like a power lifter, lifting very, very heavy weights. Then I transitioned and I became a, you know, a runner and half marathons, et cetera. That's what part of my, uh, my journey overcoming my, I end up injuring my back be, because of all that overtraining. And, and, uh, you know, luckily, God bless, I came out the other side and then able to do this and help people now. But what I believe in is uh, effectively called minimal effective dose. What is the minimum amount of exercise you can do to get the goals that you want? Now, right off the bat, I should say, if you are training for something, if you want to do a triathlon or an Ironman or a, you know, Spartan race or climb Mount Kilimanjaro, those are all great things. Uh, and you will have to train for those specifically and specific skill sets. I'm going to talk more general for the average uh, Joe and Jill who just wants to age healthy. Uh, maybe, and, and wherever your starting point is, I think you'll get something from this where you're just getting off the couch right now, or you're already a little bit active. That, that's kind of the, the framework we're going to work with here today. So back to cardio. Uh, so again, I personally believe that, you know, uh, to maximize your, your efforts in the short amounts of time. We're all busy people. It's hard to find time sometimes. I prefer to have my clients just do one to two high intensity sessions per week. And that's just like 15 or 20 minutes tops. That could be, you know, walking fast, uh, treadmill, could be going for a run or a jog, elliptical trainer, bike riding, what, you know, whatever you already have around the house or in your neighborhood or community. And that is it. Once or twice a week, 15 to 20 minutes, high intensity, enough that you get a little bit of a sweat on, your heart starts racing a bit, get your heart rate up. That's all. But the caveat is, then you need to move constantly, low level, throughout your day, throughout the rest of the week. So that means going for a walk, uh, you know, after a meal, after dinner, taking your dog for a walk, going out with the kids, maybe the kids go for a, or you're taking a bike ride with the, with the kids or the grandkids, what, what have you, and, and doing a lot of movement all the time, taking little breaks uh, throughout the day. You know, if you're in the office setting, I mean, none of us are in the office setting right now, we're all at home, but you know, whether you work from home or work in the office, you know, every hour, uh, on the hour, besides being a good break for your eyes and, and a lot of other health benefits, just getting up and walking around, going to the bathroom, grab a, grab a, a water, you know, take the long way around, you know, all these little hacks you can do throughout your day, throughout your week to add just a little bit extra movement, you know, get off the bus one stop uh, earlier, walk to the mailbox, so, you know, don't drive to the mailbox, uh, park at the far side of the parking lot at the mall and then walk in. All these little things, uh, you know, walk to appointments, what have you, just to get these little simple things. So, and sometimes just, you know, going the long way around the floor, taking the long way to something, it literally adds like 20 or 30 seconds to your task. But just those little, that little extra bit, uh, you know, multiple times a day, all through the week, all through the month, it all adds up for, for overall health in the long term. And, you know, why do we want to do cardio? Why do we want to get our heart rate up? So obviously we want to strengthen our, our heart, our cardiovascular system. We want to, you know, get, uh, you know, a blood flow, get uh, blood to all parts of our, our body, get our, our lymph, lymphatic system uh, going and draining and, and all these things that we need uh, for health, healthy life. 
Um, again, I'm, I'm a big fan. This is me personally, if uh, doing my sort of my harder workout or, or, or my longer stretch of, uh, of cardio, uh, in, in, in the morning, if not first thing in the morning, then kind of in the morning sets my, my day, uh, off right. But that being said, and I, a question I get all the time, uh, when is the best time to do cardio, uh, or exercise in general, the best time to do it is when you will actually do it. So if you cannot get it at lunchtime or in the evening after dinner, doesn't matter. The best time to do it is when you will actually get a chance to do it. There are certain advantages to different timing of when you do your exercise, both cardio and strength training. Maybe that'll come up in the Q&A. I'll delve into that right now. But the best time is when you will actually uh, get to it. So again, very simple. You don't have to do a ton. Uh, you know, just and I find a lot of people actually, I find people are in, really in the extremes, uh, the, the vast majority. They're either doing nothing or very, or very little, you know, under what they probably should be doing, or they do way, way, way too much and they over, over train, you know, the marathoners, et cetera. And again, if that's your thing, that's great. But I, I still think there's maybe a smarter way to, to train for those uh, type of events. So we got this vast majority of people who are, you know, doing something in, in the middle. So the, the point of bringing that up is that, you know, we need to have adequate uh, rest and recovery, uh, not only to repair our bodies physically, but also mentally uh, as well. So again, that's why I kind of believe in sort of minimal effective dose, you know, just do the right amount to get the benefits that you want for your health. And that's it. But again, just a couple times a week, might even be just once a week for 20 minutes, 30 minutes. Again, high intensity, you're going to get a sweat on. Uh, but the caveat being you have to do a lot of, uh, of, uh, movement, uh, th throughout the day. Okay. Uh, okay. I'm going to come back to that one, Wendy, uh, in the Q, in the Q and A. All right. So, uh, so, so that's kind of cardio in a nutshell. I'm going to spend more time on strength training. So strength training, very, very, very important. Uh, not only for, uh, well, many reasons, especially while we age. So I don't know if anyone's familiar with the term, uh, sarcopenia. That's the loss of, uh, lean muscle mass, uh, as we age, we probably all know someone like this. We've seen them on TV. We might have the, these people in our lives, maybe as our, our mothers or our grandmothers, that sort of wasted away look, you know, skin kind of hanging, hanging off, you know, fr frail looking, right? That's because a lot loss of uh, lean muscle mass. So we want to maintain Now we're not saying you need to, you know, be a bodybuilder and, and all that. And, you know, carrying too much uh, to muscle mass is actually a detriment uh, to your health, but you want, we want enough. We want the right amount. Uh, and also, uh, especially for women, but for, for all, all people as well, you know, we want to in increase our bone density, keep our bone density uh, healthy and strong uh, as we age. And the best way to, for bone density is actually weight bearing exercises. So we're going to focus more on, on on the strength training here. So that's kind of the kind of the benefits of that. Besides, also let's be honest here, you know, lean muscle mass uh, being toned. Hey, it looks good too, right? That that shouldn't be our primary driver, but hey, we all want to look good too, especially as we age, right? So again, minimal effective dose. Uh, like Dr. Iyer mentioned earlier, she hates the gym. You know, I was a gym rat in my younger days. Actually, I actually don't mind the gym, but for me, going to the gym and changing and parking and all that. And then doing, you know, by the time I go there and come back, I could actually do my workout already. So I have a whole setup at home. So what I'm going to talk about today is something very simple that people at Better Medical uh, can do in an office. You can do in your office at home. You can do in your home. You can do it in your living room. You can do it in a, in a, in a you know, walk-in closet. Like it's very minimal amount outside, very minimal amount of space you need to do. Again, I believe minimal effective dose. I think many people overtrain. And really, my belief is there's for healthy aging, functional fitness, there's really only five strength training exercises that anybody needs to do. And we're going to go through those really quickly here. So at the gym, you know, there's a lot of different machines and all that, you know, that's all, that's all great. And again, depending on what your goals are, you, you might want to use those, but you know, I sometimes see, uh, you know, people, both, both men and women, you know, they'll be doing, you know, like a tricep extension or, or, you know, or, or something like that. You know, you know, this exercise where you kind of do this and you're trying to, you know, work, work the arms here, that, that sort of thing. You know, I don't know why you would even bother doing that if you can't even do a push up, which is working, you know, the same muscles and then some. So again, just five functional uh, exercises. So we're going to go through those here. So the very first is a squat. So I think everyone probably knows uh, what, 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 what a squat, squat is. So where would a squat come into 
uh, everyday life for he healthy aging. So uh, I'm not going to ask for uh, questions or in the chat feedback right now, but I'll, I'll just give you the answer. So uh, Dr. R mentioned it uh, earlier. When we're older, you know, so basically the, the motion of a squat is motion of getting out of a chair. So when we're older, we want to be able to get out of a chair, but more importantly, we want to get off the throne. We want to get off the toilet. We want to be independent going to the bathroom. You can't be independent going to the bathroom if you can't get off the toilet seat. And that's what a squat does. It's, it's working those muscles to help you get in and out of a chair or in and off the toilet. Getting in and, in and out of a car is essentially a squat. You're a squat and sort of a side lunge, right? You think of the motion of how you sort of crouch down, get one leg in, sort of get your bum down and sort of slide your other leg in, right? And then the, the opposite of getting out, right? That is essentially a, a squat motion. So uh, again, squat number one. Uh, second uh, exercise uh, for, you know, again, functional fitness for healthy aging is a lunge. Now, I think most people know what a lunge is or, or has a good idea. And I mean, if, if you don't, you can certainly ask in the Q&A or there's lots of resources. You can uh, Google lunge or squat or, or what have you. Uh, but a lunge, where does a lunge come into place in everyday healthy aging? So the answer would be stairs. Going up and down stairs is essentially the muscles you do, you work out, the motion you do when you do a lunge is going up and down stairs. So we all want to be independent. And, you know, many uh, people when they get a certain age or they're downsizing, the kids have moved out of the house, maybe they move to a bungalow or like a, a condo or an apartment where maybe stairs aren't an issue. But, you know, stairs come in place all over the place, right? It might be at a friend's house, family member's house. Maybe you're still working and there's a fire drill. You got to take the stairs uh, uh, down. How many flights of stairs, you know, at the mall, you, like, there's stairs all over the place. Sure. We have elevators of escalators, et cetera. Uh, but, you know, push comes to shove. You need to be able to, to handle stairs, especially if you want to be independent and stay in your home as long as you can, which I think is most people's goals. Again, uh, the lunge, sort of a side lunge, and a squat combined is sort of what gets you in and out of your car. So squat, lunge, we basically taking care of the lower body completely. And again, these five exercises hit all the major muscle groups uh, in your body. Again, you can really niche down and work and isolate uh, individual uh, muscles. But again, we're talking about the average uh, person here, not somebody who's training uh, for, for something. So we got the lower body covered. Let's move on to the upper body. So again, uh, so the front part of our, our body uh, is be a pushing motion. So the number one pushing motion or the easiest pushing motion would be a push-up. So what does a push-up do for us for healthy aging, for, uh, for longevity? So the number one thing, well, many, many people come many things. Well, you know, you might want to push a door open. You might want to, you know, close it, close the car door. But really the number one thing where a, a push-up or a pushing motion comes into place is getting up if you if you fall getting up off the ground you are pushing yourself away from the ground to get up maybe you might even have to like you know sort of if you don't want to roll out of bed sort of you know you kind of push yourself and sort of slide out of bed at the same time again we want independence we want to be able to stay in our homes as long as possible so we need to develop uh, you know, sort of the, our, ch our chest muscles and our, and our arm muscles by doing push-ups. Now, I know a lot of uh, women in particular, but, you know, even people at a certain age, they become intimidated uh, by, by push-ups. But really, push-ups are all just about angles. Uh, you know, people have this notion of what a push-up is, but there's many, many variations of a push-up. And anyone who works with me can do a push-up the first day. 100% guaranteed. It's, it's simple because it's all about changing the angles to make it uh, available uh, to your uh, skill set and to your uh, capabilities. Um, yeah, a push up from knees is okay. Again, that's just changing the angles. So thank you for that question, Wendy. Uh, again, if you, have, if you have a lot of bigger questions, throw them in the, in the Q&A box, which I'll uh, get to. I'll go through the chat after as well, but uh, in the, in the Q&A box as well. So that, that handles sort of the front part of our body. Uh, back part of our body is a pulling motion. So a pulling motion could take a various forms. Probably a lot of, uh, a lot of us have seen, uh, uh, you know, pull up bars or at the gym, we got that machine where we kind of grip and we pull down, that sort of thing. There's a lot of other variations. You can do simple, you can do uh, rows, bent over rows where you turn your body over and, and pull a, a weight from hanging up and, and that, that sort of thing. Uh, again, you can Google what these exercises uh, look like, but again, you don't need any weights. Uh, you can do this body weight. You can do this at home. It doesn't take a lot of, a lot of uh, space. 
Uh, pulling motion, where does that come into place in healthy aging? Um, so basically, you know, uh, again, pulling something towards you. You know, you got the suitcase in the back of the trunk, but how are you gonna get it out now? Your groceries, pulling the groceries out of the trunk. Uh, getting a box off of uh, off the top shelf and putting it down, the resistance of the box down, that's working your back muscles. So you wanna have, you know, uh, you know, you know, decent strength in, in, in your back uh, as well. We can't neglect any body part. You know, we gotta work our legs, we gotta work our, our chest, our, our shoulders, our front and our back uh, as, as well. So that's four of the five. We've covered our lower body, we've covered our, our upper body. And again, I know I'm going very quickly here because I want to leave a lot of time for Q&A uh, at the end here. So that leaves us one left, fifth. So we've neglected, uh, what was the exercise for pulling? Okay, I'll come back to that, uh, Wendy, uh, again. Uh, so uh, the, the fifth the fifth thing, sorry, lost my train of thought there, uh, is to work our core, you know, what people think are our stomach. Uh, I personally believe our core starts at our kneecaps and goes right up to our chest. So I, I, I feel the core is more than just stomach uh, and lower back, but, uh, you know, a lot of people think uh, that's what the core is. Uh, if you ask a lot of people, and probably some of you out there too, might think, okay, what's, what's the best uh, exercise for your stomach? I bet you 90% of people would say, well, sit-ups probably. And I would 100% absolutely disagree with you. So I believe sit-ups are terrible. One, if you have low back pain or mobility issues, they're terrible. Two, most people don't do them correctly and they put undue strain on their neck and, and, uh, and, uh, and shoulders for that matter. The best exercise for your core is to do a plank. Now, I know a lot of people, uh, I hate planks. The planks or planking is just like push-ups change the angle and make it exactly to your level. So you can change planks, uh, you know, make it much easier, make it harder than what, you know, people think of as, as traditionally as, as planks. So again, we have uh, squats, lunges, a pushing motion, push-ups, a, a pulling motion, which could be a row or a, or a pull down uh, to answer your question, Wendy, and planks for your core. Those are really the only five strength training exercises that the average person needs to do for healthy aging, for graceful aging, to keep lean muscle mass, to keep our strength up, to increase our bone density, uh, et cetera, as, as, uh, as we age. Uh, going back to bone density for a second here, I, I should have mentioned this earlier about uh, why we want, uh, well, not only bone density, but also lean muscle mass. Night, for, for, for people age 65 and older, the number one cause for trips to the hospital. It's not heart attacks. It's not some other sort of diagnosis or stro stroke or what have you. The number one cause of people going to the hospital at 65 years and older is actually falls. It's actually falls. Tripping on something, slipping on the ice, what have you. What doesn't matter. It's falls. The sad thing is whether you break a bone or not, you know, obviously you break your bone, you need to get into the hospital. A lot of people get so banged up. They're not sure they go to the hospital anyway when, when there, there is actually no, no serious injury. But assuming there is some there is some injury, you maybe have to spend a day or two there. Maybe there is a bone that needs to be set. The number of people that actually catch something at the hospital, an infection or something, and like we're in COVID nineteen right now. Do you want to be going to the hospital right now unnecessarily? I I don't. I don't like hospitals to begin with. But uh, so even taking that out of out, outside of that, you know, so many people end up getting something at the hospital, some infection that becomes pneumonia or what have you, and that's what actually they succumb to. It's not the fall but the fall is what got them into the hospital in the first place. So we, if we can avoid that, you know, by having good bone density, by having lean muscle mass, by having good balance, and I'll talk about balance in just a second here, then if you do should fall, well, one, you, you'll, you know, have better balance and, and, and you won't fall. But if you do fall, you'll be able to bounce right back up. You're not going to break anything. You're going to be able to absorb that shock of the fall, get up, dust yourself off and you're, and you're good to go. So it's super, super important. Uh, another thing I said, I talk about balance. Uh, what I work on with my clients and what I suggest to everyone as well is, is work on balance. I work on balance every day. Every day I, do, I, I dedicate like a minute to do balance work. Sometimes on the weekends I'll do a little bit longer, but I encourage my clients to do balance work every day because I think that's super, super important. And it's super simple. It doesn't take long. doesn't cost any money to, to work on uh, balance. So uh, yeah, I just have some notes. I want to make sure I didn't miss anything quickly here. Yeah, so, you know, we're getting, uh, I mentioned this earlier, 
none of this takes a lot of space or a lot of time. So I mentioned the cardio again, very brief, 15, uh, you know, sorry, uh, 20 minutes, 30 minutes tops once a week, assuming you're doing a lot of movement throughout your week, throughout your day. When it comes to strength training, again, depending where your starting point is, what your goals are, you know, once, maybe twice a week, that's all you need to do. Like again, once a week, those five exercises, what I personally like to do is, is make it a, uh, and, and everyone doesn't have to do this, but again, I'm a, I like to be efficient. I like to get it over and done with. So I can do those, uh, let's call it the four exercises, because I have a big stretching routine. I include my planking with that. But let's call it the main four exercises, uh, squat, lunge, a push, and a pull. And I'll do a circuit of them, bang, bang, bang. So like a high intensity. So I'll do, I'll do uh, uh, squats right into lunges, right into push-ups, right into a pulling motion, take a rest, have a drink of water, do that again drink of water, a little bit of rest, do that again. I'm done in like 15 minutes, 20 minutes tops if I want to push myself a little bit harder. So again, and, and because you're doing it in such a rapid session, you, your heart gets racing. You, it's almost like an extra cardio uh, workout as, as well. So you, you don't have to do that fast. You can do one, take a little bit longer break, then do the next exercise, et cetera. You know, it kind of depends what your goals are, what have you. But the point I'm trying to make is it doesn't have to take a lot of time. And you can do this, you know, again, you know, in your home, in your office, uh, where, where have you, you can even just mix it up while you're doing stuff, you know, waiting for the coffee to make in your kitchen, you know, do 20 air squats, uh, you know, while you're waiting for the coffee and then, you know, go do some work and then, you know, the kids or you call or somebody calls you and you get up and every time you get up, make that a, 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 a trigger to do something else, you know, uh, you know, every five emails you answer if you're, if you're, if, if you're working, you know, do five pushups or whatever. You can make a game of it, uh, th that type of thing. Uh, so all these exercises that I mentioned, uh, I should have alluded to earlier, the pushups, uh, uh, the, the rows, squat lunges. Again, to start with, and again, there's different ways to modify them to make it simpler, but you don't need to use any weight. So if you have dumbbells or something at home, hey, that's great. You can fill an old milk jug with water to add some resistance. But even if you're starting out, you don't even need to use anything. You can just strictly do body weight. And, and to, you know, to, be, to use myself, uh, I mean, I got a whole setup at home. I have weights and all that. 90% of the time, I just do body weight. And just by how I, how I make it harder on myself, I get a very... Uh, taxing and challenging workouts, still using only body weight by, again, how I change the angles and make, uh, make things uh, harder for myself. So I've uh, gone off here for about half an hour. And again, I want to leave plenty of time for qu questions and chat. But what I did want to mention is that we, uh, I think uh, Dr. Iyer mentioned this uh, again in, the, in, in some of the invite uh, and some of the social media that she put out that brought you all on the call today. I do have a special offer. So typically I don't do a lot. Well, at Better Medical, I, you know, I do functional medicine, excuse me, functional fitness. I don't do functional medicine, uh, functional fitness with uh, clients at Better Medical. And I do a postural assessment and, uh, and, and then show people how to do exercises properly and safely and then and, and make a, a routine for them. That's, that's what I do at Better Medical. Uh, with my personal one-on-one -on -one coaching clients like we alluded to earlier, I do a lot of things. I work on nutrition, sleep, mindset, and uh, motivation, uh, breaking the belief systems, all the way to you know EMF and heavy metal uh, detoxing, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, movement is a, is, a, is a small thing I, I do with uh, my clients one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, for some of my remote clients, I do have a, a video series that I do uh, send them uh, as well. So we're all kind of in lo you know, lockdown right now. Hopefully things are starting to um, open up shortly, but I don't know when gyms or what have you, or, or when better is gonna, better medical is gonna be open or, or that sort of thing. So let, let's just go with the notion that, you know, we're not gonna have uh, as much face-to-face. -face. And I think a lot of people on this call too might not be uh, based in Calgary where, where, I, where I'm based and might be in other uh, parts of the province or, or potentially who might be seeing this as a recording. Uh, other parts of uh, North America as well. So what I am, I do have an offer, a special offer that I want, wanted to, to, to give everyone. But before that, I want to just mention that, you know, there is a lot of, um, you can, you can look online, right? There's a lot of people doing just training. You know, like every trainer who worked at a gym has moved online right now. And a lot of people are doing that before. There's a lot of, you know, stuff you can pay for. There's a lot of stuff that's, that's free. Uh, and people have always asked me, why, why, don't you, why don't you move that way as well? The problem I have is that without doing a proper postural assessment and knowing where someone's weak points are and then showing them how to do 
th these exercises I mentioned properly, that's a huge safety issue. And I, I don't think any trainer, uh, any ethical trainer should take on a client who hasn't done those things. It's very hard to do remotely. It's nearly impossible. So when I work with someone, they have to fill out a medical form. Now, better medical, that's already covered through your, your intake form, but anyone I work on one-on-one -on -one has to fill out a medical form. I have to do a postural assessment of them and some other assessment tests, uh, which I do also at Better Medical, uh, as well as I have to show them the exercise and how to do them properly and how to, how to cue them to know how they're doing the exercises properly before I write a program for them. So that's, that's one thing that's always bothering about some of these online things where, one, they're usually at a level that's not for beginners. Uh, and then there's obviously different stages and different programs that people have for beginners and what have you. But I find a lot of the beginner ones are even not for people who are deconditioned or and just getting off the couch. Uh, and two, there's no, they have no relationship, they have no stake in your safety. So that's, that's one big thing that's always sort of bothered me. So where are we at right now? Uh, I've put together some short videos that actually walk uh, a loved one or a friend of how to film you so that and walk walk you through the postural assessment so your friend essentially will or, or loved one will film you doing the test and then you send the video back to me so I can actually assess you to see where there might be imbalances or things to, to watch out for. Uh, of course, uh, uh, a medical forum to fill out as well. And plus then once I'm satisfied with those uh, that you can handle uh, uh, again, just body weight, no, no weight exercise, very simple exercise that, but that you can handle those. Then I will send, um, uh, uh, these videos, these five exercises, uh, plus a stretching video, how to stretch properly, which is another thing that a lot of people, uh, neglect in general, as well as other trainers. It is super, super important that you stretch properly after, uh, you know, anything, uh, exercise, uh, you do, you know, even if I'm just, you know, doing a elliptical trainer, which is, you know, low strain on the knees or the joints. Uh, but, you know, I get going a little bit. I still stretch out afterwards. Uh, definitely after strength training, I stretch out the muscle. So it's very important. So again, my offer to anyone on this um, call here or this, this webinar is uh, to is uh, send these videos to you that, that shows someone how to film you so that I can assess you. You send the video back as well as a medical form and then access to uh, my uh, videos that I, that I pre-recorded on how to do these exercises uh, properly. Uh, so again, for a special for this sort of webinar and, 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 and for like the online and the, and the distance, uh, I have a special right now, so it'll be $99 for this, uh, all inclusive, tax, everything, all inclusive. But for the first five people who reach out to me via my email address, uh, which is uh, info at health. Dot com and I'll, I'll put that up uh, later. Uh, I'll uh, $79 for the first five people who might be interested in that. But again, I'll just let me wrap it up and I can certainly go over those terms again if people have questions. Uh, but I really want to get to the, the Q&A and some of the questions that came in the chat and, and, and the Q&A box. But again, just in a nutshell, movement is very important. People are meant to move. We need to move constantly. We can't be sitting around uh, too much of the day. Uh, it's also, it's, it's a myth. You can't crush a, a workout in the morning or do a big long run or bike ride for two or three hours on the weekend and, and call that, call that your week. We have to constantly move every day, constantly throughout the day. Uh, you know, there, there's this whole notion too, you know, like, well, if I get my 10,000 steps in, first of all, that's kind of a, a myth uh, that, 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 that was just a marketing thing. Uh, I mean, I've tested out 10,000 steps does roughly equate to about 10 kilometers of walking or running, you know, what, what, what have you, maybe a bit shorter for running, but, uh, but there's really no science behind that 10,000 stuff. That was totally a, a marketing thing. That being said, the more steps you get, theoretically, you are moving uh, a lot, uh, a lot more, so, which is good. So, but the point being is you can't do it all, like your first thing in the morning, go for this big, long run, long bike ride, long walk, whatever. It's like, yeah, I got my 10,000 steps or whatever your number is, and then sit around all day. Right, you, you, you know, two or three hours uh, of sitting or lying around or no movement totally negates everything that you did up to that point. So you, uh, you, you, gotta, you gotta just keep moving all the time. And then when it comes to strength training, again, we wanna stave off sarcopenia. We wanna have build, keep our lean muscle mass uh, for health, build our bone density. And, uh, and, and again, all those benefits that come, cardiovascular uh, health, 
you know, blood flow, you know, so many things, so many other ailments. I mean, it's all a package, right? Like Dr. Iyer mentioned earlier, right? You, you need to sleep properly. You need to eat properly. Uh, all these other stressors uh, in your environment, uh, mental stressors, uh, and movement is, you know, plays a part of that too. So it's, all, it's the whole thing, but, you know, we're just talking about the movement uh, piece today. So, uh, again, movement very important, and you can't neglect either part. You need to do your cardio, you need to do your slow, slow movement, and you need to do a little bit of strength training as well. So with that, uh, we do have one Q&A, and we have a bunch of stuff that came in in the chat as well. So please, um, if you have anything, if I wasn't clear on anything, please uh, throw it in the Q&A box. I'll go through the chat first here. Uh, let me go here. Uh, So a uh, question here, I'm a cardiac patient, was told minimum 150 minutes a week of bringing my heart way up. Thoughts being that I had to, uh, okay. Um, so I don't know what way up means. Uh, so I guess that means an elevated heart rate. So again, I think a couple times a week, whether it be through, uh, through strength training or cardio, you wanna get up to that, you know, where hard enough, that um, you know your heart's going, you're sweating, you're, you'd have difficulty having a conversation. The rest of the time, that low level movement I keep talking about, you wanna be at such that you could actually still have a conversation with someone if somebody was with you. And, and maybe right now we're in social isolation or what have you, you don't have someone to talk to, but you wanna be able to, working enough that you, you're, you're feeling it, you're, you're, you're taxing your body, you're doing good for your body, but not, not so much that you're out of breath that you can't talk. And 150 minutes minimum, uh, you know, that's great. That's, that's not that much if you break it on a per, per day basis. Uh, you know, so whatever, whatever you can get in, right? Again, when's the best time uh, to work out when you'll get it in? Uh, when's the, how much is the best as much as you can handle? Um, oh, another question I get all the time from people too. Oh, I'm 65. I'm 55. I haven't worked out in 40 years. Like, is it, am I too old to start? You're never too old to start training your body. You're never too old to strength train. So let me make that, uh, clear as well. Uh, push up from knees. Okay. Yes, exactly. That is uh, just an easier form uh, of a push up. Again, it's all about form, having proper form. And it's all about angles. Uh, you know, uh, you can even make uh, push ups easier than push ups from knees if, if, if they needed to be. Uh, what was the exercise for pulling? So there's a different couple different exercises uh, for pulling. Um, I'm going to assume most people aren't going to have any equipment. And again, what don't, you don't really need equipment. They're not even going to have a pull-up bar or something like that. So again, very simple, just doing a, a bent over row. Uh, again, these are all sort of uh, detailed uh, uh, greatly in my, in my exercise videos series. But just uh, quickly, if you just uh, bend over at the waist, uh, brace yourself one hand on a chair, and then you have your other hand uh, dangling sort of uh, loosely down, <coughs> excuse me, down the side. And then you can just pull your arm up, hold it. I, I can't really, sorry, I can't really demonstrate within, in the setup I have here in my office. But, uh, uh, you know, again, and just to uh, pull some, it doesn't have to have any weight. If you have some small dumbbells, one or two pounds, or five pounds, whatever, uh, you know, to provide some resistance, you can do that as well. But you don't even need to have any weight. So essentially bent over at the waist and pulling one arm straight up uh, to, uh, to work the, the back muscles. Uh, again, form is very important and I'm, I'm definitely not doing it justice here with my, with my, with my setup here. Uh, I'm coming to Calgary June 15th week. Do you want to press this in? Yeah, do, do. Uh, okay, so as far as uh, I am, I, I'm a healthy person. I take a lot of precautions. Uh, this coming weekend, I'll be seeing one of my long-term clients for the first time in eight weeks uh, in person. So certainly take all precautions. I'm not worried about uh, transmission or anything. So if you're not worried about transmission, uh, and we will certainly take precautions. I can do a postural assessment being two meters away from you. Uh, I can uh, uh, guide someone along exercises being two meters away from someone. So that is, uh, that is not an issue. So uh, uh, Wendy, if you want to reach out to me afterwards and you want to do something, we can, uh, we can totally do that. Uh, full body movement is the best. Uh, for, for sure. Uh, again, you know, uh, you know, doing a squat or a lunge uses your entire uh, lower body. So, you know, you're using your major muscles, uh, your glutes, your hamstrings, your, your quads, but, you know, your calves and, you know, all, all your abductors, everything gets uh, used at, at the same time. And same when you do a push-up, 
Uh, you're primarily working your chest, but your triceps are also going to get worked. Your shoulders are also going to work. So yeah, full body. So you do those four exercises, you're hitting the whole body uh, entire, entirely. Uh, better to stretch. Oh, great question. Great question here from Deborah. Is it better to stretch before or after a workout? Uh, thank you for bringing that up. I should have mentioned that earlier. Before your workout, whether it be cardio or strength training, before a workout, you want to do dynamic stretching, which means you're not holding a stretch in place. You're kind of moving. So as an example, would be like, like say, uh, I'm just trying to do something I can do here in front of the camera, arm circles, right? You know, something, something like this, warming up the shoulders, warming up the chest, right? Where you're constantly moving, that's dynamic stretching. You want to do that before you do exercise. Again, whether it be cardio or strength training. After you're done, then you can do static stretching. That's where you hold a stretch for you know, 15, 20, 30 seconds. Sometimes I hold some stretches for problem areas for a full minute or longer. So dynamic stretching before exercise, static stretching after exercise. Great, great question. Uh, can we get your video? Uh, how, okay, how, okay, how, so Herb, Herb asked, how can you get our, uh, my video? So again, those are for, uh, for clients, uh, for my one-on-one -on -one clients, for clients that come uh, via Better Medical. And again, the special offer that uh, I can go over again is part of the, the package as well for my, my videos. And, and for a tighter midsection, uh, so number one, again, all you need to do is plank for your core. But really, if you want to see abs, if you want to time, it, that really comes down to nutrition. Nutrition is the number one thing to, to lose weight, to, to uh, lose uh, the bulk around the midsection. But once, once that bulk is gone and you want to tighten it up, uh, then for sure you need to do uh, core work uh, or planks. Uh, that being said, I mean, even if you have some extra weight or some extra bulk, you should still be doing uh, core work because you want to keep your, your abdomen uh, strong. But more importantly, and, and trust me, I know this, coming from a back injury, you want to keep your back strong. The best exercise to keep your back, lower back strong is to work your stomach, to work your work your core, work your abdomen. Uh, so uh, I just want to be clear: you can't do planks and lose weight off your midsection, right? That's that's a nutrition piece, uh, for sure. But again, planks are the best uh, best best exercise uh, for the core. Uh, what price if I come and do it in person stuff in a video? Okay, Wendy, we can talk about that uh, that off offline for sure. Um, and I'll reach out to you because uh, I, I have, uh, you all registered for this. So I have everyone's email address. So Wendy, I will reach out to you for that. Uh, what are your thoughts on hot yoga? Uh, I love yoga. Uh, I think yoga is fantastic. Uh, let, let, me, let me answer that in two different pieces. So I think yoga is fantastic. I personally, uh, I, again, coming from a back injury, uh, working with two physiotherapists and a chiropractor, I sort of, the combination of the three of them in tandem, I've, we, my team developed a stretching routine that I do daily. Um, and I don't want to get into my backstory of how I hurt my back and, 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 and what all I went through then uh, to say I'm over that challenge now, but I still do it daily because I remember how I was back then and I never want to be in that spot again. So I do this very elaborate um, 35 to 45 minute stretching routine every day. There's a lot of yoga components or movements uh, to it. So I'm a big I'm a big fan of yoga. Now, do I do yoga every day? No, I haven't found the, and there's different types of yoga. I haven't found the right um, yoga methodology or teacher that has yet to speak to me. I've tried a few times. I end up just not sticking with it. I know no one has called to me yet, uh, but I do believe yoga is, is fantastic. Now, as far as hot yoga, I've never tried hot yoga myself per se, but I am a huge proponent of sweating. Uh, so one, you know, getting, working out, getting hot, sweating is a great de uh, uh, detox, uh, you know, get heavy metals and other things uh, out of your body. I actually personally uh, do infrared sauna every day, minimum uh, 25 minutes. Uh, a lot of times I'll, I'll go a whole hour. I'll do my meditation and some of my other self-care practice in there. So I'm a huge proponent of the heat for sure. Building those heat shock, pro heat shock proteins, which makes us more resilient, helps boost our immune system, which is super important right now. So while I've never done hot yoga myself, I'm a huge fan of people doing yoga and I'm a huge fan of the heat. So I hope that answers that question. Uh, Pilates, same thing, fan of Pilates. I don't do Pilates myself, but I think anything that gets people moving and working their muscles is, is, is great. So that is great. Okay, so that's everything from the chat thus far. And then in the Q&A, uh, is there an easy strength exercise for knees? I struggle to do squats and lunges because it causes 
pain in my knees. Okay, a couple things. So first of all, um, all those exercises that I mentioned, including the plank, they can all be modified to be easier. So I'll, I'm sure we can find uh, a variation of lunges or squats that are easier for you. Uh, that's number one. Number two, it's all about uh, proper form. So I would rather have someone, and this isn't necessarily per se for someone who's knee injuries, but it, it also applies to someone with knee injuries. I would rather have someone have a, gr a lower range of motion, a high, i.e. only squatting a little bit to the point before they get pain, but do it with great form, than try and go past or to that knee, that knee pain point or too low where form is broken just to get low. I'd rather someone go lower in good form no pain. We never want pain. I never want any of my clients to do anything that has pain and then, and then, and then go up and just do more of them. Right? So if your range of motion is less then you can probably do maybe 50 or 60 instead of just 20 going deeper. Uh, so that's number one. Number two, unless there's structural damage. And uh, this is a question from Kim and Kim, I, I don't know your history. If you actually have any structural damage, a lot of times knee pain or pain in general in our joints is actually caused from inflammation and inflammation come from so many factors. Um, food is a huge tr uh, source of inflammation. Uh, could be a lot of uh, other things. Could be could be our water. Could be our air quality. Could be metal exposure. Uh, could be uh, EMF, which I briefly mentioned uh, earlier. Uh, you know, these are all stressors to our body that cause inflammation. Uh, just a personal note. So when I was younger, I played football. When I started in junior high, I played football. I was overweight. I was obese. Uh, I was always the chubby kid. Uh, at 18 years old, kind of about the time I stopped playing football, uh, I was morbidly, morbidly obese. Uh, I had knee pain from high school, you know, through university, I had knee pain and it, and they got a little bit better uh, over time. But then when I really started running, I, I always have a ton of knee pain and I just thought, okay, it's just part of it. I, I really loved running. Uh, I just thought it was part of it. I'd ice my knees down and, you know, rub, you know, those lotions or those, uh, you know, those, uh, like tiger bomb and all that kind of stuff, rub my knees, heat, ice, all that sort of thing. Once I cleaned up my diet and lost the last, you know, 50 pounds I was holding on to, I don't get knee pain anymore. I always thought I had damage, you know, from getting chop block, from playing football and all that kind of stuff. I always thought I had some low level knee strain or ligament damage or something. Nothing enough that I actually had to go check down and get surgery or anything like that. But I thought I had some minor damage, but it was always just inflammation. I feel primarily from, from diet that was causing my knee pain. Now I don't get knee pain ever. The only time I get knee pain is if we're at some family gathering and, you know, great aunt Lucy, you know, has made some homemade, you know, strawberry rhubarb pie from her garden. And I, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to just enjoy myself, be part of the family, you know, eat with intention, uh, have a slice. Yeah. Next morning, I'm going to feel that knee pain. And it's always my left knee. It's always the same one. So it's obviously weaker. So, so, so Kim, to your question, I think there, there's more to it. We can certainly work around it with exercise, but also look at, uh, I would suggest look at, you know, causes for inflammation in your life too, maybe primarily, primarily through, through diet. Uh, and that was our only other question. Uh, anything else came through? The okay. Yeah, there's some here. Okay. So a question is a nine-year-old torn rotator cuff injury. Planks are very painful. Any other comparable options? Uh, again, we could probably, uh, again, I'm not giving, I don't know your medical history here, so I'm going to talk in very general terms. Uh, I think we could probably change the angle and make the plank easier and take pressure off the rotator cuff uh, for sure. And if that still doesn't work, then we certainly look at some other uh, core exercises that could be, uh, could be done. Uh, I'm not saying you can't do sit-ups or, or something else, but I just think planks are the, mo are the most effective. And that's why it's, it's, uh, it's the number one uh, choice in that regard. So do we have any other questions? Okay, so no more Q&A questions. So we still have a couple minutes left. So if anybody has any other um, questions or anything they want to put in the chat, uh, by all means, uh, please, we still have a few more minutes. Maybe I'll go, because I think we I said I would come back to it. I'll just go over... Um, the what my offer I guess again. So essentially, I have filmed these uh, videos that show uh, a loved one or a friend or a family member how to film you doing the assessment. Uh, so I will send these videos to to you. You have your friend film them or follow the guidelines of how to film you doing the assessments. You send them back to me with a medical form. Um, once that's all good, then I know kind of where you're at. 
uh, then I will send you the exercise videos, uh, including those, uh, the, the five exercises plus how to stretch properly, uh, as well as make up a little plan and we'll have a little maybe conversation back and forth, uh, you know, your history or your exercise history and, and whatnot. Uh, and, uh, and then, and that is, uh, for, uh, all inclusive tax, everything, uh, what did I say? 90, $99 all inclusive. And for the first five people who, who are interested, I'll drop it to $79, uh, by emailing me at info at Deepak Saini health, D E E P A K S A I N I health.com. And that's my website uh, as well. And, uh, and we can, uh, we can uh, get you started here. So uh, again, we're in COVID-19 right now. We're in quarantine or in lockdown, what have you. Uh, but these are really things, I mean, I've been working with clients with this for years doing these same things. Again, you don't need to go to the gym. You can do it in your office. You can do it in your home. Uh, even when we're out of this and you can move around and go outside, that's all great. Uh, but these are still something in your toolkit you can do when you're in a rush. Like, hey, I only have 20 minutes, uh, you know, I can do this here or, you know, depending on what your office situation is, you know, be, you know, have sort of a private office, you can close the door, you know, do it at your, in your lunch hour, in no one's the wiser, what have you. So uh, no other questions at the moment. We do have a couple more minutes. Anybody have any other, uh, any other questions or, or, or anything you want to talk about or anything that I need, uh, you want me to clarify? I'll give you a second here to type in if anyone is interested. Um, yeah, I, you know, I think nothing replaces an in-person uh, uh, assessment. You know, again, obviously for social creatures, humans, face-to-face -face is great. It's a little bit easier to pick up um, cues or uh, poor posture or bad habits, what have you, in person. Uh, but that being said, it will come up on the, on the, on the video as, as well. So obviously in person is ideal, but where we're at right now, and I don't think there's a lot of people on the call as well who don't live in Calgary uh, per se. So this could be an option for them as well. Uh, what's my email address again? So I'm going to be sending, uh, I'll, I'll say it again here in a second, but uh, just as Dr. Iyer mentioned, the recording of this video will be sent to all of you. So you can watch this all again, uh, as well as my contact information and uh, you know, I'll, I'll reiterate what the offer is again in that email. So you can probably expect that uh, tomorrow, uh, by end of day tomorrow for sure, I will send that out to everyone. But just again, my email address is info at my first name, last name, health.com. So info at Deepak, D-E-E-P-A-K, Saini, S-A-I-N-I, health.com info at deepaksanyhealth.com is, uh, is my email address. And, uh, and certainly, um, you know, whether from the, the Zoom uh, invite, I think you can contact me that way. Uh, also, go, it'll go to the same email, email inbox. Um, you know, if something should happen and you forget about this or what have you, you know, I can be found again at Better Medical. Dr. Iyer knows how to, how to get a hold of me and, uh, and that sort of thing. So, we got uh, five, minute le five minutes left here. I've dedicated this uh, time to all of you. So uh, I'll leave this open for another minute or two if, for some more questions, if anybody has. No questions or anything more in the chat. Okay, well, I'll again, leave it for a minute or two, but while I'm waiting for, for another question that may or may uh, come in, again, I thank you all for, uh, for coming on uh, today's call. I hope you learned something and uh, realize that you don't have to go to gym, you don't have to use weights. Uh, it's uh, being healthy and strong is, is very simple uh, when you boil it down to a sort of, you know, the nuts and bolts of it uh, can be done in your home, in your office, very little time, not much space, uh, you know, again, very standard, uh, uh, office. Uh, I don't know for, for any of you that have actually have, have been uh, to Better Medical, uh, Dr. Iyer's office in Calgary. I usually work out of Dr. Wu's office. So if if you know that office, it's it's pretty small. So we don't need a lot of space. Basically, just need the space for for you to be able to lie down. If you have enough room to lie down, so let's call it, uh, you know, the average person uh, six feet by maybe three or four feet wide. That's all you uh, really really need here. Uh, for, for space. So again, gratitude for, for all of you for being on the call. Gratitude for Dr. Iyer for inviting me on to, for this uh, bonus webinar. We did get another couple questions in here, so I'll just answer them really quick here. Any great recovery tricks? I always have full body soreness even after light workouts. 
Okay. Uh, yeah. So, well, one stretching number one for sure. Uh, foam rolling or using a tennis ball or something to uh, roll out some sore spots. Uh, maybe uh, this is from Deborah. Deborah, if you have, uh, if you want a follow-up question, is there any particular area that's more sore than others or what have you? Uh, I have. Um, I don't know if any of you go to a chiropractor. That a lot of times they'll have like a, one of those double-headed. Uh, ball massager type of things, you know, and they'll kind of run up and down your spine before they do adjustments sometimes, at least my chiropractor does. I actually have one of those at home. So uh, after, after I do you know, a, a stretching, I'll foam roll my legs out because my legs are sort of my, and my glutes are kind of my, uh, my weak areas. Uh, again, just by nature of uh, my job and doing these consults and, 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 and having to sit in front of a computer, I end up sitting quite a bit as well and, and driving around to a C clients and stuff sitting in the car quite a bit. So my hip flexors and, and my hamstrings get, uh, get tend to get tight. So I'll foam roll. I'll take a tennis ball. I mean, you can certainly use a harder ball, like a lacrosse ball, if you, if you, if you want the, the punishment, but I'll take a tennis ball and roll out to certain joints, like right here between sort of the shoulder and the chest. Just take a tennis ball, roll it in there. I can roll it up and down my spine. So that's for things. Again, you know, um, not immediately after, but you can certainly do a cold plunge if that's something you can uh, tolerate. Uh, you don't want to do it immediately after exercise because you don't want to blunt the, the hormetic response of the exercise. So wait at least an hour, I'd say, have a cold plunge if you, if you want. Uh, again, I do lots of sauna. Uh, sauna, if you have one, or heat, you can certainly do immediately after exercise. It won't blunt the hermetic response to exercise. Uh, but I, f I just feel awesome. I feel it just loosens everything up. I feel great. You got that detox, you get that sweat on. Uh, so yeah, that's, uh, that those are, those are a couple of things we could certainly talk, uh, more, more advanced, uh, uh, uh healing or, or recovery techniques, uh, you know, maybe on a, on a, on a one-on-one -on -one call or something like that. Okay. Another question, uh, as far as lunges are concerned, do you stationary lunges or traveling lunges? Again, with, with all these exercises, there's different ways to do them to make them harder. Uh, so if you do, uh, stationary lunge, it will be much simpler. And again, there's different ways to do stationary lunge too. If you do a stationary lunge, it's much easier than if you do sort of walking lunges where you're going up and down to your driveway or your, or your backyard or, or what have you. Um, or even just, you know, so a stationary lunge where your feet never move and you just do the lunging motion is going to be simpler than even just a one step and back lunge, et cetera, et cetera. Um, yes, I do like the foam roller, even though it can be uncomfortable. Uh, yeah. It for sure can, especially on the, I find on the spine uh, or back, it can be very uncomfortable. Um, yeah, it just, it just takes getting used to it. And it depends what kind of foam roller you have and there can, there's different hardnesses. Uh, you know, I actually have a, I don't do it on my legs because that's just too painful, but on my, sorry, I don't do it on my hamstrings or my glutes because it's too painful. But I actually have a piece about so big of, you know, so let's call it a foot and a half maybe, uh, a PVC pipe. So hard plastic. Uh, so that is, I, I can only do that on my quads. So I'll roll that out. I'll roll out my quads after I do my legs or my legs are really strained. Uh, but uh, I use a softer one uh, for, for my hamstrings and my glutes. So, may, you know, if, if it's very uncomfortable, maybe it's too hard, the one you have, maybe try a softer one. Uh, by all means, uh, if, if it's too soft, you can try a harder one and that sort of thing. So um, that is all we have in the chat and we're at time here. So again, you can certainly reach out to me for the offer that I have. If you have any follow-up questions, happy to answer them. I wanna be respectful of everyone's time here. This was scheduled for an hour, we're right at time. So again, gratitude for, for, for being on the call and uh, appreciate it, thank you. Uh, again, thank you for all being on the call and uh, feel free to reach out if you want. You can always follow with Dr. Iyer or myself at, uh, at uh, the email address I provided. And again, I'm going to send you the, the link to this recording plus my offer and, uh, and anything else. So if you have any questions in the meantime, email me and maybe I can reply to, to everyone. Uh, th again, thank you all for, so uh, have a great night. And again, uh, you know, just keep moving and uh, we will get over this uh, COVID-19 and we'll get back to normal sooner rather than later, I'm, I'm guessing. So again, thank you.